Hello everyone, welcome back to the Entity Education Podcast. As always, I am your host, Interact. In this episode, we're going to be covering the Druine, Druine, probably pretty much only ever referred to as the Dredge. As always, a big thank you before we get started to our biggest and most consistent sponsor for the podcast, Water. In case you haven't checked them out, please follow the link in the description and use the code ENTITY for 100% off your order. So the dredge has the same normal base stats of any killer, a movement speed of 4.6 meters per second or 115% speed, and a terror radius of 32 meters. Now let's move on to the power details section of the podcast and start talking about the dredge's power reign of darkness. As with most modern killers in Dead by Daylight, there's kind of a lot that goes into Snail Man's power, so let's hop right in. First thing you'll notice is that your power actually cannot be used right off the bat. You do have to wait 12 seconds before actually being able to do anything with Reign of Darkness. Once your short startup timer is over, you'll notice a few things change. Firstly, you'll get three tokens by default in your power icon in the bottom left, and you'll be able to press mouse to PC of course to start channeling Reign of Darkness. This will do a few things and give you a few options. Firstly, Dredge moves at 3.68 meters per second or 92% speed while channeling Reign of Darkness. All lockers on the map will become highlighted in white and have the red flaming arrow icon above them for the one that you're targeting. The dredge will also leave behind a remnant in the exact spot that you started the channel. Survivors will be able to see this remnant and can destroy it by just walking into it. Next you'll notice that you have two options for what to do. You can press mouse 1, once again PC of course, to return to your remnant, or press left control to teleport to the highlighted locker. Or you can stop pressing mouse 2 and you'll stop channeling. So let's start off by talking about returning to your remnant. By default, the remnant will not only remember the spot that you started the channeling, but also the direction you were facing when you started channeling. If you choose to swap back to the remnant, it automatically turns your camera into the same orientation as you were when you placed it, which can be a little disorienting, although you will kind of get used to it in time. And do remember that if a survivor touches your remnant, it gets destroyed and you lose the ability to warp back to your remnant. So now let's talk about what happens if you choose to teleport to a locker. Obviously you'll start teleporting to the locker, moving at a speed of 12 meters per second or 300% speed. You'll notice that the charges on your power icon will go down by one after a teleport. This is the amount of times you can chain together teleports to different lockers, if you choose to. If you teleport to a locker that for some reason has a survivor hiding in it, you'll automatically pull them out of the locker and they'll be on your shoulder as if you've grabbed them. The same goes for if a survivor tries to get into a locker that you are currently hiding in. Survivors can lock lockers, which makes sense, and will cause you to not be able to leave the locker immediately after teleporting, and locked lockers will be highlighted in yellow while you're teleporting to them, so you know that you're teleporting to a locked locker. Lock, locked lock, locked locker. Locked locker. Yes. It takes three seconds to break out of a locker that has a lock on it by default. You can hide in a locker for 8 seconds until you start giving off a kind of a menacing warning sound to nearby survivors and they'll see that the dredge is hiding in that locker. It's fairly noticeable. You may also notice that your field of vision or FOV will get bumped up to 120 degrees while chilling in a locker, letting you kind of see your surroundings a little bit better while camped out in a locker. Once a lock on a locker is broken, why is this so hard to say? It cannot be replaced. It can only be locked a single time. If you notice a lock on a locker while running around, they're kind of brightly lit with like an orange-ish aura. You can just basic attack it to break it. It only takes a survivor about half a second to lock a locker, and you will have the normal cooldown of hitting something after breaking it, so you kind of lose a little bit of time in that exchange. Now there is a bit of weirdness as to how exactly multi-stack lockers work in terms of if they are locked or occupied or both unlocked. Teleportation seems to prioritize a survivor who is in a locker currently and then a locked locker 
over any unlocked lockers. So essentially, if there's like a double stack of lockers, two lockers right next to each other that spawn in a group consistently, and one of them is locked, survivors can kind of screw you over twice by locking one of them. You teleport to that double stack, you break the first lock, they lock it again, the next time you teleport to that double stack, you'll be in the other locker that now has a lock on it as well. So survivors can kind of mess with you and make your power not as useful if they're really smart about it. Doing either a teleport back to a remnant or teleporting to a locker does incur a cooldown of 12 seconds on Reign of Darkness. So now let's get into the more passive aspect of the dredge's power, Nightfall. Nightfall will go off once you reach 300 charges of Nightfall. The dredge will just passively gain 0.25 charges per second by default, which is extremely insignificant and would take 20 minutes of being AFK to just have Nightfall go off naturally. However, there are other ways to gain charges. Every time you injure or hook a survivor, you will gain 20 charges of Nightfall. Do remember that injuring is when you put them from healthy to injured, downing them does not give you an additional. That's where the hooking comes in. The dredge will also gain 10 charges of Nightfall if you teleport back to a remnant. For each injured survivor in the match, you will gain an additional 0.75 charges per second on top of the baseline amount. That means for a single injured survivor, you're getting one charge per second. For two injured survivors, you're getting 1.75 charges per second. For three, you get 2.5 charges per second. And with all four injured, you'll be getting 3.25 charges per second. While you are just sitting in a locker, chilling, you gain six charges of nightfall per second. I'm a little unclear if it counts the time spent teleporting between lockers or not, the code isn't very clear on if this functions or not, but visually it seems like Nightfall charges faster as soon as you start a teleport to a locker. So I believe that as long as you are in the teleport animation or sitting in a locker, you're gaining these six charges per second. If all of that is just too much math for you or just too confusing, the main takeaway is that as long as you are teleporting around, using your power, hitting survivors, and hooking survivors, Nightfall is going to charge up a lot faster than if you aren't doing all of those things. Once Nightfall reaches 85% completion, all players in the match will get a special spooky noise and the edges of their screen will sort of flash, kind of letting everyone know that Nightfall is imminent. There is a three second transition time between the day and the nightfall when it does become fully charged up. And nightfall will last for 60 seconds by default. And then there is a 1.5 second transition from night back to daytime. When nightfall does happen, the world becomes significantly darker for all players and survivors will have everything outside of about an 18 meter radius of them just become entirely black. However, to combat this, because if there wasn't any way to, it would be a little ridiculous, survivors will be able to see each other highlighted in a kind of white, bright, glowy aura while they're within 54 meters of each other, and they'll be able to see the dredge with a kind of fainter white aura when the dredge is within about 22 meters of them. Outside of 22 meters of the survivors, the dredge will be kind of cloaked in the darkness of night and won't really be that visible. The dredge, as well, will get some ability to see survivors. Survivors will be highlighted in that same whitish aura up to about 70 meters away from you. Uh, this does, it isn't a true aura, it doesn't go through walls, it's more like Freddy's dream time aura, where they're just very bright beacons of light on the horizon, but if they're around a wall you won't see them. Reign of Darkness does also get some buffs while Nightfall is happening because, I mean, it's kind of in the name, isn't it? During Nightfall, the dredge's teleport speed will be buffed up to 38 meters per second or 950% speed, which I believe is the fastest thing in the game, and only have a 4 second cooldown. The dredge will also get killer instinct notifications for 3 seconds on any survivor that is within 16 meters of any locker that the dredge chooses to teleport to during nightfall. 
Hello, yes, uh, the editor interact here. You also get a color instinct notification when you teleport back to a remnant in Nightfall. And sorry that I sound so bad, I'm a little sick. Now let's move on to the obligatory add-on details section of the podcast. We start off at the commentary with Wooden Plank. This add-on will increase the amount of Nightfall charges when a survivor is hooked by 25%, bringing it up to 25 charges of Nightfall per hook. Next up is Mortar and Pestle. This add-on will make the dredge emerge from its remnant facing the same direction as when the teleport is activated instead of the direction the remnant was facing when placed. This does exactly what it says and kind of removes that confusion on what direction you'll be facing when you teleport back to a remnant. Following that is Follower's Cow. This add-on will make teleporting to the remnant activate killer instinct even when not in nightfall. Does what it says. The final common add-on is Caffeine Tablets. This add-on will make the aura of locked lockers visible in yellow while charging the gloaming and teleporting. This does what it says. Moving on to the uncommon add-ons, we start with Malthinker's Skull. This add-on will increase Nightfall charge speed by 66% while any survivor is injured, increasing it to an extra 1.25 charges of Nightfall per second extra per injured survivor, on top of that 0.25 baseline amount of Nightfall charges per second. The math will probably be up on the screen if I remember to put it in the graphic. And for audio-only listeners, uh, you know, have fun. Do the math yourself. Next up is Hattie's Calendar. This add-on will decrease the time to exit a locked locker by one second, bringing it down to two seconds total to break free. Following that is Fallen Shingle. This add-on will make using Reign of Darkness increase the nightfall charge speed by an additional 15% per second, bringing it up to seven seconds of nightfall per second while teleporting to or sitting within a locker. Next up is Burnt Letters. This add-on will increase the amount of nightfall charges when injuring a survivor by 25%, bringing it up to 25 charges of nightfall per time you slap them with your weird meat scythe thing. And the final uncommon add-on is Air Freshener. Gives you one additional power token for teleporting. Does exactly what it says. Moving on to the rare add-ons now, we start with Worry Stone. This add-on will reveal the aura of a survivor for 6 seconds when they lock a locker. It does what it says. Next up is War Helmet. This add-on will increase Killer Instinct duration by 1.5 seconds during nightfall, bringing it up to 4.5 seconds total of the blinky, weird, webby, orange goop on survivors when you teleport to a locker. Hello, yes, sick editing interact back here again uh, to remind you that this also increases it to 4.5 when you teleport to a remnant. Next up is Automarian writing? Aut Aut Automarian? I don't know. This add-on will decrease teleport cooldown by 4 seconds while not in nightfall, bringing it down to 8 seconds total. Following that is Destroyed Pillow, me after I sleep. This add-on will decrease teleport cooldown by 2.5 seconds during nightfall, bringing it down to 1.5 seconds total for your teleport cooldown while in nightfall. And the final rare add-on is Broken Doll. This add-on will increase the duration of nightfall by 20 seconds, bringing it up to 80 seconds of darkness total. Going up a tier, the first very rare add-on is Tilling Blade. This add-on will make survivors who are injured from full health during nightfall become afflicted with blindness, hemorrhage, and mangled status effects for 60 seconds. Following that is Lavalier Microphone. This add-on will reveal the aura of survivors for 3 seconds after the dredge uses their final teleport token, as well as making all lockers within 6 meters of a survivor open and slam whenever the dredge teleports to a locker. This is a fantastic add-on for just kind of dicking around with the survivors. Next up is Field Recorder. This add-on will make Nightfall start during the beginning of the match, make Nightfall trigger automatically when the final generator is repaired, and make any survivor who comes in contact with a remnant become afflicted with the exhausted status effect for 15 seconds. This does what it says. And finally we have Boat Key. 
This add-on will increase your teleport speed while not in Nightfall by 5 meters per second, bringing it up to 17 meters per second, or 425% speed, as well as breaking all active locks on lockers when the final generator is completed. The wording is a bit odd on this one, but I did test it. It only functions when the last generator is finished. So let's talk about the Druinese ultra rare add-ons. We start with Sacrificial Knife. This add-on will make it so exiting a locker during nightfall will block all vaulting locations within 16 meters of that locker for 5 seconds. And the final ultra rare add-on and final add-on in general is Iridescent Wooden Plank. This add-on will afflict survivors with the exposed status effect for the final 12 seconds of nightfall making it so you can instantly down them right before it becomes daytime, I guess. So now, unless he flaked out on me, let's go to a special guest to talk about the Teachable Perks. Welcome to the podcast, Mr. Ots Darva. Maybe you've heard of him. Um, so uh, the Dredge's first Teachable Perk is Dissolution. Dissolution will activate three seconds after injuring a survivor by any means and remains active for 12 slash 16 slash 20 seconds. While active, if a survivor fast bolts over a pallet inside of your terror radius, the pallet will be broken at the end of the vault animation, and then this solution will deactivate. Uh, the Dredge's second teachable perk is Darkness Reveal. Darkness Reveal will reveal the aura of, a source of all the survivors within 8 meters of any locker on the map for 3 slash 4 slash 5 seconds after you search a locker. Darkness Reveal has a cooldown of 30, slash, uh, 30 seconds. And the Dredge's third teachable perk is Septic Touch. Septic Touch will make any survivor who is performing the healing action within your terror radius suffer from the blindness and exhaustion status effects. This effect will linger for 6, slash 8, slash 10 seconds after the healing action is interrupted by any means. And yeah, if you want anything else, it's just to read. Thank you, Mr. Otz, for that. And, uh, you know, checks in the mail, man. So now we will talk about tips for playing the dredge. The first and probably most obvious one is his usage of power at loops. You can start channeling your power at a loop. Typically you want to do it near one side of a pallet, then chase the survivor to the other side of the pallet. This pretty much leaves them with basically only two options of dropping the pallet, in which case you teleport back to the remnant and hit them, or reverse dropping a pallet, or I guess not dropping it at all, in which case you just stop channeling and hit them. This strategy only really works if survivors don't understand that as soon as they see you place down the remnant, they can just abandon the loop and go to the next one, since you are slowed down to 92% speed while channeling and will be unable to catch up. Outside of using remnant teleportation at loops, the dredge pretty much plays how you would expect like a normal killer to play. You can teleport to lockers across the map if you have an aura reading perk or see an explosion from a generator miss skill check or, you know, you just think survivors are in that area. You do have a lot of mobility in this way. The mobility is kind of cranked up to 11 in Nightfall, and the teleportation speed in Nightfall makes it actually worthwhile to try and cut off survivors by teleporting to lockers in front of them during a chase if they're going to, like, a tile that has a locker. The only issue is that if it's a locked locker, you may lose some time and they might get away, but it's kind of a gamble. During Nightfall, you do want to remember that you're a fair amount more powerful. You get free aura reading basically on survivors near you, you can teleport insanely fast, you get less cooldown, and you're just undetectable the entire time. You should be able to try and get as much value out of your brief Nightfall window as you can. You want to, you know, be hitting, downing, pressuring generators, hooking people, all that, all that fun stuff while you have your souped up power. Outside of that, there isn't really much to talk about with the Dredge and how to play them, honestly. Um, they're pretty straightforward from what I've seen and played myself. There's an argument of whether you should hit locks to break them off of the lockers when you see them. And honestly, I'd say that as long as you aren't mid-chase, you know, go for it. Sure, you lose a bit of time and you get slowed down while you're in the recovery animation and all that, but... You might need that locker later on in a match, and it being locked might hinder you from getting it down or something. I just wouldn't really recommend hunting down every lock you see, or you'll just end up to losing the match because you're fighting lockers and not survivors. So now let's talk about perk builds. Um, 
This is all subject to change because I'm recording this before the mid-chapter patch comes out that changes a bunch of perks, so, yeah, you know. Hello, future sick interact back here again in the editing process. Um, wow, I didn't realize how correct I was about, uh, what I said not being true. So I'm just going to cut the entire part out and say that, uh, I don't know what the meta is. Just run whatever you feel like, man. Who cares? It's the Wild West, baby. Let's go. Woo! I'm dead. Ow. So now let's move on to everyone's favorite section, the meme builds for Dredgerton. The first meme build is Oops All Lockers. For this build, it's all about the lockers. It's in the name. Nothing but lockers. Just lockers. Why? Why not? For this build, bring the add-on's lavalier microphone for some extra spooks and worry stones so you know who is touching and locking your precious lockers. For perks, you're going to want to bring Darkness Revealed, Iron Maiden, um, Nemesis, because it triggers if you get stunned with a locker, and then, uh, man, there really aren't that many locker related perks huh like not even not even fire up increases how long it takes for you to search a locker wow um bring shadowborn i guess so you can see more lockers at once this build kind of fell apart while i was trying to make it uh let's move on to the next one the second meme build is the final night for this build you're going to want to bring the add-ons field recorder and boat key for perks, you're going to want to bring Bitter Murmur, Blood Warden, Hex Noed, yes I know, and No Way Out. This perk is all about trying to snatch a 4k from the Jaws of Defeat during that final nightfall that you get once all the generators have been powered up due to your add-ons. For the extra meme, you can play normally during the match, and then once the final night hits, try and get the 4k as quickly as possible, and if you fail and it becomes daytime again, just AFK because you're not allowed to play during the final daytime, I guess. If you want to commit to the meme. And that concludes this episode of our the Entity Education Podcast, covering the Druinae, pretty much only ever called the Dredge. As always, links to social media, thanks to the sponsors. I have a Twitch stream that I don't ever stream on. I have a Patreon. All that stuff's in the description. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe for more in the future, maybe. I don't know. Thanks, as always, for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.